What's going on everyone? Austin John Please here and today I'm gonna to be going over how you can get shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Legends Arceus. <laughs> It's officially release date in Australia and the game comes out tomorrow in America at midnight and I figured today would be a good day to let you guys know how shiny Pokemon work in this game and first things first new merch available austinjohnplays.com slash slash merch we now have hoodies great second let's talk about the shiny locks this game has some Pokemon shiny locked pretty much anything that's out in the open you're able to catch it multiple times is not shiny locked the beginning partner starter Pokemon is shiny locked. That means that you cannot soft reset your game at the beginning of the game in order to get a shiny Rowlet, Cyndaquil, or Oshawott. However, you are going to be able to find these Pokemon out in the wild after seeing the credits. So if you're worried that you're not going to be able to have a Hisuian, Decidueye, Samurott, or Typhlosion in your Pokemon home, don't worry you are going to be able to do it with this game. There is one gift Pokemon. It's technically a reward for completing a side quest, and it is a Alolan variant of a Pokemon. It is the only one in the game, I think, and it is also shiny locked. Every single legendary Pokemon and mythical Pokemon is shiny locked. Any Synovian legendary Pokemon that you may be thinking of, those are shiny locked. Any mythical Pokemon that requires save data from previous games, those are shiny locked. Any side quests in the post game revolving around legendary Pokemon, if there's returning legendary Pokemon or new legendary Pokemon, those are all shiny locked. You cannot get any of those shiny. Oh, also there is a later point in the story where you need to go to three specific caves and fight alpha Pokemon. Those three alpha Pokemon are shiny locked. <laughs> I'm being vague intentionally. It's a great game. I don't, I don't, I don't want to spoil it. Listen, you don't want spoilers. I don't want to tell you anything. You're just pff, playing through this. I was like, oh, what? And honestly, from everyone that I've spoken to already, shiny Pokemon seem to be much more common. And by seem to be, I mean, they feel as though if they are more common, because, you know, more Pokemon spawn in at once. So if you run through an area, you could see a whole bunch of them. But also at the same time, they actually are more common if you put the work in. And instead of it just being, oh, you know, beat the game, complete the decks, get the shiny charm as previous games, it's now much more broken up and much more incentivized to do basically the main story quest of completing the Pokedex. Excuse me, Gyarados, you're being a little noisy. I need you, I need you back in the ball, thanks. Every Pokemon in the overworld has a base rate of 1 out of 4,096 to be shiny when you first play the game. Meaning playing the game and doing absolutely nothing is going to give you by far the worst odds for finding any single Pokemon shiny. Good, he's sleeping. So you have your base rate at 1 out of 4,096 for Pokemon to be shiny, right? And then from there, if you were to go and you were to complete a Pokemon's Pokedex page, and by complete, I mean reach level 10. I'm gonna stop whispering, acting like he can actually hear me. And what I mean by that is the scoring on this page equals 10. As you can see, number caught, I have the second check mark, but there's an up arrow, so those count for double, so those two equal four points. Times I've seen it use splash one, but it's doubled, so now I'm at six points. Times I've given it food, one. Different forms I've obtained, two. And then number I've evolved, three, and that's it's way over 10. So because of that, the Pokedex research level is 10, and that means that I now get a second reroll at that shiny Pokemon, which now means that I have two shiny rerolls at that Pokemon, or one reroll, two rolls, two rolls at that shiny Pokemon for about one out of 2048. From here, there's something else you can do to increase your odds at finding a shiny Pokemon. If I were to look back at Magikarp's page, you can achieve a perfect Pokedex page. For that, I mean 25 caught, seven of them large, 40 defeated, 100 times you splash, bet it five times, both male and female forms, and evolve 10 of them. I personally don't have something I can reference for that. However, if you do that, it's a perfect page, complete all tasks for a species, and you will have stars on the Pokeball, which now means that you have four shiny rolls for about one out of 1,024 odds.
Now, I'm going to be frank with you. The shiny charm is in this game. And unlike Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, it does work. However, it requires completing every single Pokemon's Pokedex page and beating the game and the post game and the post post game. So you're not doing that anytime soon. Instead, there's actually another mechanic that's built into the game that starts soon as you start the game. Well, technically, it's soon as you're able to get past uh, this bridge right here. Once you're able to walk across this bridge, a new mechanic is unlocked that happens very randomly, and it's called Outbreaks. So what Outbreaks are is when you leave the town, you're going to see on your map here, there's going to be a Pokemon icon. That means that there's an Outbreak, which means that there's going to be a cluster of Pokemon who spawn there. So if you were to have a Pokemon who you didn't complete its dex page, but there is a mass outbreak. You have really great odds. You have 26 rerolls for a shiny, which is equivalent to one out of 158. So there's a one out of 158 chance that this mass outbreak is going to have a shiny Pokemon for you. At time of recording and time of pre-release, there's still some questions as far as the most effective way to use these mass outbreaks for the same specific Pokemon. But for now, at the very beginning of the game, all you need to know is if you go to a mass outbreak, there's a chance you find a shiny Pokemon. If you do, cool. If you don't, move on. At a later point in time, we may have a more efficient way on how to almost guarantee a shiny from a mass outbreak. However, right now, due to some discrepancies, I personally don't want to advise you either way, but be sure to be subscribed for future updates on that. Back to Austin talking about things six hours ago. I now realize that Mr. Mime does the sitting down drinking tea thing that it does from Detective Pikachu, and I love that. All of those things can be compounded, all right? So if you have a Pokemon who's research level 10 and it's a mass outbreak, you have 27 rerolls for one out of 152 chance at a shiny Pokemon. If it's a perfect research during a mass outbreak, you have 29 rerolls for a shiny Pokemon. And then also, if you have the shiny charm, it very slightly increases going back to without a mass outbreak and having the shiny charm on a level 10. You're going to have five rerolls for one out of 819 odds for having a perfect dex page and shiny charm, one out of 585. The best odds you could possibly have beating the game, beating the post post game. There, there's a mass outbreak. You perfected a Pokemon's page. You have the shiny charm, everything. You have 32 rerolls for a one out of 128.49 chance at a shiny Pokemon, which honestly is pretty phenomenal. However, if I'm gonna be honest with you, having a mass outbreak, never even seeing the Pokemon before and having a one out of 158 chance, that's phenomenal. I recently had my first mass outbreak shiny just randomly show up. It was actually Mr. Mime over here. And after I defeated the first batch of Pokemon, a shiny showed up. As opposed to my Wurmple, which when I entered the mass outbreak, he was just there. He was just one of the first ones already there. And that was pretty neat. Beautifly, you're being too noisy. Man Titan 2. Why can't you guys be quiet like Gyarados and Mr. Mime back there? And I wanted to go over exactly how you can avoid failing them because it, it's very possible. And I actually just stumbled across one right now. While I was running around, even before fighting Cleaver, I'm just running around with my uh, Quilavo over here, right? And what about these Baneeries? Did I finish the Baneeri Pokedex entry? Yes, great, it's level 10. So I start heading up here. I collect some items from this tree. And there it is. If you see right down there, at the bottom right, you can even see it right here before the little stars happen. And I don't know if you can hear the, st the shiny sound because I pulled out Weird Ear at the exact same time, so let's listen back to that. Yeah, no, it's extremely muted, so luckily I did have that on-screen notification. First thing I did was hit uh, D up or the pause button because there's some things you want to do to avoid failing this Pokemon Trust me So the reason I did that is first thing you want to do is go into your settings and you want to turn off Auto saves, okay, we're gonna save 
And now let's go back in there and confirm. Yes, it is disabled. Perfect. Now I'm gonna drop down in manual save right here. The reason I'm gonna drop down in manual save is if I fail to catch this Pokemon for whatever reason, so like, say for example, I scare it and it runs away. Gonna run away? Gonna run away from me? Boom, it's gone. Just fail the shiny Pokemon. I just hit the home button, close the game, reopen the game. That was the importance of us turning off autosave. Now, it could have had a move that did recoil damage. I could have been in a situation that it's a timid Pokemon and it ran away from me. There's many different things that can happen. So it's important that as soon as you hear that sound, whatever you're doing, stop what you're doing, drop down the hard save because that Pokemon is saved in that exact same spot. Boom, there we go. The same statistics, same everything. And he's just chilling there, right? So now, if I wanted to, I could come about just trying to catch this bad boy by throwing a berry. I think I have one feather ball left. Yep, one feather ball left. He's going, he's eating. We're gonna get real close. And boom, failed it. <laughs> I, uh, it ricocheted off of the ground. Did that work? Perfect, and it shows up there at the top right. Now, I know this looks weird. We turn the game off, we're gonna turn it back on. If you initiate combat with the Pokemon and then leave the battle with the Pokemon, it has the same HP, but if you reload, it's HP and PP are restored. So, those are fun facts to know. I'll never get tired of hearing that sound. All right, so I wanna see right now where, where is this bad boy? All right, he's at this tree, and I'm just going to drop down a, there we go, waypoint marker. And I wanna see how far away we can go and then come back, and that Pokemon is still there. So let's go a full 50 meters, all right? Full 50 meters, let's go a little bit more just in case he moved around, and let's head back to where that 50 meters was. He's still there. Taking a nap? It fell asleep. <laughs> 200 meters away. Let's head on back. And everything I do right now doesn't matter. We turned off auto saves. We have our heart saved down. We know that it's going to be perfectly safe exactly where it is. Oh, that time we went far enough away that we got the sound again. 450 meters. Let's head on back. Now you might say, Austin, why are you checking this far of a distance? Because I'll be honest with you. Maybe you don't have the Pokeball to catch this Pokemon. Then what are you gonna do? Well, if you can go 500 meters away, you can go and get all the items you need to craft a Pokeball, can't you? And still there. Let's fast travel back to camp. Maybe we have items in our inventory that we can use to craft. Maybe we can, uh, maybe we can go buy Pokeballs. Still there. Let's go to the beginning of the level. The Fieldlands Camp. Let's run all the way back over. 890 meters away. I'm just gonna run there. Now I guarantee the limitations of this do fall within. You're not allowed to leave the zone, meaning like you can't go back to village. Say for example, you want to go get the items to make better Pokeballs that are currently not being sold. You probably can't do that. In fact, I'm, I'm gonna guarantee that you can't do that. I'm here for your pink friend. Still here. I went back to the beginning of the level. It's still here. Say for example, I wanted to sleep until the morning for a better thumbnail or something. Still here. <laughs> Are you gonna, you gonna get caught, bro? Great, we caught it. I love how it shows up there as shiny. It shows up everywhere as shiny. On your menus, on the report screen. We can actually go show that right now. You see that little blue shiny icon? Also, the Pokemon itself is shiny. You can tell because it has the, the pink accents right there. Now you might say, hey Austin, that was a fantastic example of you literally saw and kind of heard the Pokemon. Well, what happens if you're not that fortunate? Well, this clip right here that I managed to save, I was going and catching this Apom, right? Heard the sound. Have no idea where it came from. 
probably somewhere on the other side of the hill. It turns out that on the other side of the hill, there were some Staravias over here, and it's kind of hard to tell which one is which, so the first thing I did was I stopped moving, I stopped caring about Apom, turned off auto saves, dropped down the hard save, and I went and I caught this Pokemon. Now you might ask, what do Pokemon in the water look like when they're shiny? Well, here I am just chilling, riding around on Basque Legion, having a good time, trying to catch myself a Mantike or whatever else is in the water, and... Luckily for me, this is a Pokemon who, who wasn't really gonna run away or do much of anything. If you're at all nervous while you're flying in the air, that you're not going to be seeing these notifications because the Pokemon are so far away and they're in the grass and everything else. The good news is the Pokemon appear slightly visible before the environment textures do. Meaning that the Pokemon are gonna spawn on the map and then as you go a little bit more forward, the grass is gonna spawn, which I don't know if that's done to save processing power or specifically why it's done, but it makes seeing these Pokemon that appear shiny so much easier. Like this. Riding around in Braviary, Nature's Pantry, first area, just carousing around, right? And on the right side of the screen, boom. That's what happens when there's a shiny Pokemon in a tree, which obviously you can't run away from this. You just have this one encounter to catch this. So. This is one of those times that you can't just save in front of it. You just gotta throw out your balls and hope. Good news is it's not gonna run away when it comes out of a tree. At least I don't think. But we just got Burmy. My now seventh shiny Pokemon. Well guys, there you go. That's how you're gonna be notified for shiny Pokemon and that's how you're going to not fail shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Legends RCS. Did you find this video helpful? I know you did. Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.